I'd like to call to order the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting for Pottstown Council for March 8, 2023. Would you rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge to the Flag. <clears throat> I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Starting with good news, we have a DCED grant presentation. Is uh, Representative Cerisi here? Or Alex? Okay. We'll hold a space for him. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Under subcommittee reports infrastructure. Councilor Lebedinsky is not here. We'll hear from him on Monday. Uh, transportation. Anything? Nothing. Efficient methods. Also, Councilor Lebedinsky on Monday. Ordinance review committee. Councilor Proskell, no meeting. Okay. <clears throat> uh, economic development. We'll hear on Monday. About the land bank, Mr. Keller. Um, yeah, so uh, last month I think it was presented that the land bank acquired 848 Queen Street. Um, <clears throat> there were three applicants uh, for that property, and the land bank at their last meeting decided to table that uh, decision to transfer the property to the winning um, applicant until next month. Um, they also are going to start looking at their uh, policies and procedures. I believe that... Um, their uh, guiding documents say that they have to be reviewed every two years or so. So, mm -hmm. and then I think that I think that um, probably have to come back to council too. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> seeing that our uh, state rep has made it here, Representative, hey! you're on. Give us the good news. Wow. Although somebody walked out of our office with a big check last week. We said, I'll be able to catch it. How's everybody? Good. How are you? Great. Just came back from Harrisburg. It was wonderful. Anyway, um, so you were looking to replace the lights with LEDs. I think we already, I don't know if you got received the money officially yet. We haven't. We've started. Well, so this is for your files then to keep the $250,000 to continue that project um, for the conversion of lights at our guests. How old, Alex? 70 years, 60 years? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> old lights. Old lights. Old um, technology. Old technology. So I'm going to give this to Dan. Do Dan, you, you can't cash it. It says it's not endorsable. Can you hold but... it up for me, please, so I can take a picture? Because you know that's what I do. Thank you. The check isn't as big as we'd like it to be, but um, it's a start. And mm -hmm. as you know, we've begun a new session. Um, so I'm here also tonight to talk to you about what projects are important to Pottstown as we move forward. So let me give you this, Dan. So this is a big check that you got. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, sir. Thank you. And as we get into this new session, it's important for us to hear from the borough on the projects that are important to the borough. Um, as you all know, well, maybe you don't all know this, but the new chair, um, the new uh, majority leader of the Democratic Party, which is the majority party, is Matt Bradford, who's from Montgomery County. And the governor, of course, is Governor Shapiro, who's from Montgomery County. And since we are the county of the governor and the majority leader, it does help us when we have projects that come forth. So I would ask that... Um, you keep in mind, and I know we work a lot together with Justin uh, and here are the projects, but really think about what's important to the borough. It has become more and more of an issue to help our smaller boroughs, help those places that need it. It is becoming a, a, a priority of the party, of the majority party, to make sure that we come back and reinvest. We know there's been a lot of deficiencies over the years. A lot of communities that probably should have gotten help um, we're held back from getting help, and now it's time to give the help they need. Um, 
we will be hopefully, uh, the governor presented his budget yesterday and it's a roadmap of where we're headed. It is not the budget of Pennsylvania yet. Uh, there's still a lot of negotiations that have to go into it. Um, education is of course one of the biggest issues uh, that we have to fund or find funding for. And we know that Pottstown is, as you've heard me say, and as you're all aware, the fifth most underfunded district in the Commonwealth and is a priority to find funding for the Pottstown School District, which doesn't affect the borough, of course, but affects every resident because of property taxes, um, which are out of control because we are not funding education properly mm -hmm. um, throughout, the com throughout the borough. Um, and it will continue to be an issue until we can get the proper funding, which <laughs> well, beyond what anyone's going to say, is not going to be $4 billion put into the budget for public education. But there's a lot of other areas um, that we're looking to push and push through, which again helps you. And there's a push for um, Main Street USAs. The governor brought that up about, he, he used the example of Phoenixville, how the revision and the revitalization of Phoenixville helps everywhere, but shows that why are we reinvesting in new communities when we have Main Street USA and why don't we bring it back to life? I'm paraphrasing what he said. He yeah. went on for almost 80 minutes. I won't go for 80 minutes. Please. Um, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Trinita. Uh, but it, it, it definitely was a refreshing um, state of the Pennsylvania to hear what he said and where he wants to make investments. So we're hopeful that a budget will pass um, bipartisan. Uh, it seems like members of the Senate agreed with the budget that was presented, um, and it wasn't as controversial on the floor after he presented it, so we'll see. Oh, so good. thank you again. Thank you for your service. Welcome, Mr. Minostra, to the council. Um, who's ever on Zoom, good to see you. I can't really see you. I just see your, your initials. Um, and please, over the next few weeks, as we make our budget request for this year, go high or go home. Um, let's try for what we really want so we can go to battle for what we need. So thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, emergency services. Chief Hand? I put that in my report. We didn't have anything to add. Nothing to add. Okay. Oh, well, that's good. Thank you. Human relations is loving good. It's already on my list, Marsha. I agree with her. <laughs> <laughs> That's number one on my list. And I was just, he asked me how it was. <laughs> told him, we need more money for the arches. Um, good That's evening, Councillor, Madam, um, Madam Mayor's not here, and Council mm. President. Um, March is Women's History Month. And actually, International Women's Day is today, March the 8th. Um, it's a worldwide oh. day to reflect <laughs> and celebrate the accomplishments of women and bring awareness to the fight for gender equality. Um, it is also Irish American Heritage Month to honor the achievements and contributions of Irish immigrants and their descendants living in the United States. It coincides with St. Patrick's Day on March the 17th, um, which is also the Irish national holiday. Um, the commission's March meeting will be held on Tuesday, March the 14th at 6 p.m. in council chambers, and all are welcome to attend. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. you can forgive me one second. I want to share this with you, what I just received. So as you know, <coughs> Jamie Orr, if you all remember him, he did the audit mm -hmm. car show. He's here. here. Yeah. Oh, where are you, Jamie? Oh, come here. Oh, yeah. Come here. So you all know we did the bus, the bus deal, right? Yeah. Jamie oh. just sent me the pictures. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. Sorry. Hello. Of the Ukrainian children getting on the bus that we sent to Aww. Ukraine. Oh, that was so, nice. I mean, we've got to find a way to share with them, but. Yeah, you can't cast this. I can't, but. There's, that, there's nice photos of kids in Ukraine with the school bus. Just for what Jamie did, I think you all owe him a great round of applause. Yes, Jamie. For what he did for putting Pottstown around the world. So, so thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't see you there. How could I have missed him? I'll be back. Oh, he said he'd be back. Uh, okay, the library, uh, Ms. Lipsky, is she on? Yeah, she um, had sent a message that uh, she wasn't feeling well tonight, oh. um, but that uh, the library is doing great. Uh, they just finished their 2022 annual report for the state, and she will send a statistical report to council later this <coughs> email, and she thanks everyone for the support. Super nice every time I go in there. Yes, they are. 
Uh, the Ricketts Center, Councillor Kirkland, anything? Uh, the report was submitted this month. And the school district, Councillor Lindsay. Okay, so, so the school had a fantastic play, High School Musical. It was beautiful. You know, we got some talented kids in, in Pottstown. If you didn't know and you didn't see it, you missed it. But there will be more musicals. So it was beautiful. They did a fantastic job. And the um, music, the it, it was just, it was nice. It was nice. I had to leave early because I had to go to work the next morning. But anyway, I, I seen what I, what I could. Um, also, um, Judge Palladino, am I saying it right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, had a special swearing ceremony for new students representing the school board. So it was... Tyler Burlton and Elizabeth, I'm gonna mess her name up, so I'm gonna spell it. A D E D E J J I. Okay, so I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name, but it's. And um, Katrina was there, that's the um, president for uh, the school board, and I just wanna welcome them to the school board. And uh, that's it for my report. Very good. Short and sweet today. <clears throat> okay, the mayor's not here. We'll have to wait till Monday. Actually, we have a solicitor. Oh, no, we have a solicitor. Mr. Garner, <laughs> educate us. Oh, thank you, Mr. Weehan. Um, rewind back to January of 2019 when many of you took office, and we had a segment on the agenda where we talked about various topics that might be of interest to the new counselors, whether it be competitive bidding or zoning or subdivision or conditional use. And then COVID came along after a few segments and kind of wiped that out. So speaking with uh, Justin and Dan, we thought maybe it'd be a good time to kind of reinstitute that. So we would have a short discussion every month about a couple of topics that might be of interest to council. In the future, if you guys have anything you want to talk about that comes in front of you frequently, we're happy to talk about it. But for tonight, we thought we'd kind of repeat a couple of things we talked about early on. And the one thing I think that sometimes gets lost in translation is the agenda and how it gets put together. Uh, according to council rules, um, the president, vice president, manager, and solicitor have a meeting and assemble the agenda, which you see here tonight. Um, it's not to exclude topics that you as counselors want to add to the agenda. So in the future, if you have a topic that you'd like to add to the agenda, all you need to do is call or email Justin, Ginny, Dan, or Don, explain what the topic is, explain, give a little background, so we can put it on the agenda so it's ready for council discussion. It may or may not have a vote right away, but if it's a topic you want to talk about, we can add it to the agenda and it'll be a point of discussion so everyone's prepared to talk about it rather than to bring things up just at, at the last minute or impromptu. So. If anyone has topics in the future, reach out to Justin, Ginny, Dan, or Don, and we'll get them on agenda so you can uh, talk about whatever you'd like to talk about. It's not a closed agenda, but that seems to be the best way to get everybody involved if they have a topic they want to talk about. Sure. You. You, you don't have to, except we have an issue with quorum and sunshine law, okay? So uh, obviously two counselors are fine, three counselors are fine with seven people on council. But uh, other than that, and Joe, I think in the past you had attended from time to time, if I recall. So yes. Uh, been to some. Hey, Ms. Vanny's been to, mm -hmm. to some of them as well. So again, we can have three, can't have four. Uh, then we have an issue with sunshine law, which which, Joe, is a good segue to the next topic, which is Sunshine Law. And <laughs> even a cue card. I, I, I teed it right up for me. Okay. So, um, again, uh, most items you see on the agenda, we talk about publicly, we, we speak on them. And then occasionally we have an executive session. Mm -hmm. And the executive session basically is limited to topics that the state law, the Sunshine Act, says we can talk about behind closed doors. Um, the five primary uh, exceptions to the Open Meeting Act uh, are ones that we use when 
when needed. And those are the following. First has to do with real estate. The sale, the purchase, or the lease of real estate permits you to go into executive session to discuss that. Um, you have to vote publicly when you take action, but that's a topic that can be discussed behind closed doors if you choose to do it. The second item that we talk about sometimes behind closed doors is the topic generally called personnel. Well, personnel isn't personnel. Personnel is actually people and, and individuals. So specifically, the act says matters involving the employment, appointment, termination of employment, terms and conditions of employment of an employee or a potential employee. So basically, we're talking about those items when we're talking about a, a particular individual. So that allows us to go behind closed doors to talk. And frankly, uh, most of these make sense when you think about what you're talking about, because some discussions you wouldn't want to have publicly if you're considering certain things, the like hiring of a potential employee, you might not want his employer to know, his or her employer to know that they're looking for another job. So there's, there's reasons why the, the legislature through Mr. Cerisi and his colleagues have uh, attempted to define what we can talk about uh, outside the public view. Um, the third item that we talk about occasionally is litigation. And there's two topics to litigation. There's active open litigation or there's litigation that's threatened. So we're permitted to talk about litigation, strategy, discussions, negotiations, all in executive session. It's perfectly legitimate. I would always recommend that you do that in executive session and not do it in public for obvious reasons. The fourth is collective bargaining. And specifically, when you're negotiating a union contract, for obvious reasons, you don't want to talk about your negotiation strategy, what you're willing to offer or not offer, and you're permitted to talk about those in executive session. Again, makes a lot of sense, just like the litigation prong. The fifth item that we use occasionally as a borough council is quasi-judicial deliberations. And typically, this is probably for zoning hearing boards, civil service commissions, thing, entities that are more judicial than legislative. But as you know, council, you become a judicial body when we have a conditional use hearing. Mm -hmm. You are the substitute for the zoning hearing board in the sense that you hear evidence and decide whether or not an applicant has satisfied the burden of proof to justify the granting of the conditional use. So those are the five main items that um, we use as a, as a municipality or as a, a borough for executive session. They all kind of make sense from a common sense standpoint that some of these things you don't want to discuss publicly. Um, the law permits you to go into executive session. You're not necessarily re required to go into executive session, but for obvious reasons, many of them shouldn't be discussed publicly. As with any of those, when you take a vote, it has to be public. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we talk like tonight, if we say we're going into executive session, we'll indicate under what topic we're going into and indicate if we're planning on coming back and taking actions. Typically, we don't take action on Wednesday night. Regardless, it's usually the Monday night. But that's just a very brief overview of the Sunshine Act and the exceptions for uh, open meetings that would allow you to, to talk about items behind closed doors. I'm happy to answer any questions. I think all of you probably know that, but mm -hmm. I just kind of thought it was a good refresher because I think occasionally the audience uh, maybe doesn't understand why we say we're going into executive session and, and what we can do there. So uh, that's my topic for tonight and for future meetings. If you guys have any suggestions that you want to talk about or want to hear about, again, we can talk about it in the abstract or the conceptual way rather than having to deal with it as an agenda item. So that's all I have. Thank you for your time. And, I have a uh, question. Sure. So as a quorum, if we, if you have a dinner party and you invite all of us to the dinner party and people see us sitting around the table and just talking, is that okay for us to do that out in public? Um, yes, it is. I know the answer. I just want to yes. tell everybody else. Yes, it, it, it is okay. The, uh, the uh, distinction, the distinction in that case, Trinita, is that you can't um, I'll, I'll quote the definition. A prearranged gathering 
of an agency, which you are an agency, council's an agency, mm -hmm. for the purpose of discussing or deliberating agency business. So if you're at a dinner party, and it's a planned dinner party, and you're all there talking, the advice that a solicitor would give you is don't talk about agency business. Talk about the weather, talk about sports, talk about your kids, talk about anything. But if you start talking about agency business, technically you're on thin ice. Mm -hmm. But again, at a social event, you're not deliberating or discussing agency business. So perfectly <coughs> legitimate, legal, no issues. Otherwise, you could never get together with all of you, four of you. The last thing you want to talk about. Right. <laughs> So when is your dinner party? <laughs> it's Chuck's in, in Florida. Oh, Chuck's. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> any, any other questions? Any other questions? Thank you. Mm. Thanks, Thank you. Chuck. All right. Let us know what you what we'll hear about next month if you want to hear anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and now on to our manager's report, Mr. Keller. All right. Well, thanks, Chuck. He uh, keeps us legal for less. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was really helpful for everyone to understand. Yes. I do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a couple updates for everyone. Uh, there are changes in some of the timelines that we announced for some of the park infrastructure projects uh, in Chestnut Street Park and Memorial Park. So Memorial Park, the pedestrian bridge replacement is delayed until 2024 um, due to long fabrication lead time uh, required for the steel bridge. Um, but that allows us to move forward quicker with Chestnut Street Park. So that will now proceed in 2023 instead of 2024. Mm. Um, and the Riverfront Park Waterway Pedestrian Bridge work will commence, uh, the plan is to commence that early uh, this fall. And then um, I just want to congratulate um, Michael Lenhart and especially Andy Graham uh, for winning the Parks and Recreation uh, Play Streets Award uh, program from NRPA. Yeah, so, I love that play applause. street. Yay. And that is super fun. I love that. And and it was. I'm sorry. It was what best ex excellence in parks and recreation. Excellence in parks and recreation. Yeah. So. Nice. Very nice. I love that. That was. I love that idea when you presented that last year. That was great. Yep. So we're mm -hmm. we're teeing up for that again. Um, this coming year, and uh, we, we plan to, to do that going forward. So It was great. I got to do things that I haven't done since I was a kid. I don't do them the same, like hula hoop, but it was still a lot of fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, just a great way to get the community mm -hmm. out, get, get the kids engaged, and get information out to the community, too. So thank you for your work on that. Um, just a clarification, um, there was a report about uh, 860 Cross Street in the newspaper over the weekend. Um, if you recall, this is a property where uh, there are uh, remediation activities that are going to, going to go on by the BASF Corporation, and then they're going to um, turn it into a, uh, a park with uh, basketball courts, a parking area, some walking paths, and th things like that. Um, several years ago, we started negotiating an agreement with BASF to potentially take over that property um, as a part for the borough. And we are getting close to finalizing those, those agreements, and hopefully we'll have something for council in, in the next uh, couple of, of months. Um, but I just wanted to um, clarify something in the article because it made somewhat of a negative implication and stated that DEP was not aware of the remediation activities at the site. Um, this is because that their permit to perform these activities is under the EPA, not not the DEP. Mm. Um, so it appears, you know, from a regular regulatory standpoint, um, everything's in order, um, and you know, but obviously the regulatory is for the remediation is EPA, so it's not under the control of the borough. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that for everyone. Uh, we are working on our 2023 roadway paving plan. Um, we've got a lot of projects to coordinate with that with, including the lead line replacement project that uh, the authority is undertaking with uh, 1.2 million that was received part in uh, loan and part in grant. So far we're out um, and identifying the uh, locations where um, 
lead might be found. It's based on the age of the home. And we've checked 80 locations so far, and we found 18 services that have, that have lead. So under this contract, um, we, we have to replace 100 uh, lead service lines. And um, so we've got a lot more discovery to do before we'll actually start work on that. And then also, we've got a lot of events coming up that will be on later in this agenda. Um, now that we have moved to Ready Monco as our primary emergency alert system, we would encourage everyone to sign up for that because we are going to put on these street closure dates for the major events like the car shows so that the residents and businesses can be kept aware via text, via email, however you like to receive those, those messages. There's an option for you to select there. Um, and then we'll, we'll probably also use it for street sweeping as well that we conduct in the downtown, um, as well as some of the main thoroughfares like Industrial Highway, Moser Road, Wilson Street, et cetera. So it just helps keep everyone more in the loop. And that's going to be the primary way that we reach out to people for these types of uh, events. Um, on uh, another note, um, the authority is in discussions with um, Mascaro to potentially take uh, Lecce from the Pioneer Crossing landfill uh, in exchange for uh, the sludge that is produced at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, so it's, it would be a really good benefit uh, for us if we had a long-term agreement to dispose of our uh, sludge at, at the sewer plant um, and kind of almost uh, what we're looking at now is almost like a trade agreement. We would take their lechate, they would take our biosolids. So we'll, we'll keep everyone updated if there's more um, uh, uh, discussion on that. And then um, also the authority uh, is planning on uh, filing as a potentially impacted party um, for a Wawa that is proposed at Grosstown Road and Old Reading Pike in West Pottsgrove Township. Um, I don't think that anyone's necessarily opposed to the development, but um, the fueling station would be located 1,000 feet from our uh, water intake on the Schuylkill River. So we want to make sure that if that site is developed, that we've got containment um, standards there in place that are hopefully above and beyond just what the uh, the federal government requires for these types of facilities. And um, that concludes my report. I'm happy to take any questions. Yep. Seeing none, you're good. Thank you. <clears throat> OK, you have a presentation about Mosaic? Yes, yeah, so we have uh, Tracy Purdy and Marie Haig here. Wow. So they're uh, looking at um, some improvements on the 400 block of High Street. And I think this all stems from um, meetings that were that were organized by paid to try to figure out um, how we can enhance the uh, conditions and quality of life on the 400 block and that includes community art so I will pull up your presentation and you can take it away Thank you. I'm really short how's that that's good <laughs> My name is Marie Haig. I'm the chairwoman of Pottstown Community Arts. We are a committee of Mosaic um, CLT, and that is true. We have, Mosaic was able to garner a uh, grant from the Pennsylvania Council of Arts for $3,500, and we did reach out to PAID um, to see how we could help improve the 400 block. Uh, we came up with many ideas, um, but we would like to propose uh, doing two of those um, this year. Uh, the first one is to stain the existing tree planters, but not just that, but to also build new ones so that the north side of the street would also have um, planters. And of course, these planters, then we could help beautify them with flowers, just like they do further East on <laughs> on High Street up in the 100, the 200, and they use those those beautiful cement um, flower pots, and they don't have those on the 400. So this is our attempt to bring the flowers down and to help beautify that area. So that's our first idea, and if we should there be sure. there should be a second slide to that and this is our second idea that we would also like to bring um, where we paint there are two benches that are right on the corner 
of High Street and really close to Washington. the name of this building. Washington. Sydney Pollock House. Is that Thank Smith or Pollock? Right. Sydney that's Pollock it. House. That's yeah. it, the yeah. Pollock House. Very correct. So <coughs> close to the library, but right in front of the Pollock House. Um, and so these are the two benches that sit there. And of course, it would need approval by them as well. But we would like to propose uh, painting those. Um, and this is just another idea to bring um, beautification down there to just just to make it more beautiful. That's what we're, we would like to do, make it more of like an eye catch, but a good eye catch. Um, and I do have a letter of support that I wanted to, to read, I suppose not the whole thing, um, but bits of it, and I can hand it over to you, but Paid um, wanted to write a letter of support. Um, they believe uh, beautification improvements such as this one will generate future investment. Um, and they are fully in support of this project uh, and these outdoor placemaking efforts contribute to Pottstown economic growth, uh, the visitor's impression of the town and the resident's pride in living there. Um, so again, like I said, this would do the railroad ties, adding more, staining them all red so they have a little bit of a pop to them and then to <coughs> add uh, flowers in there as well. Something sturdy, something that's not going to die. Very good. So I did want to, I don't know if I could hand that to you. Yeah, sure. Is that, is that helpful? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any questions <clears throat> for Ms. Hager? I have one question. Yes. Um, with the painting, the benches, that yes. looks lovely. Would that paint um, hold up to like weather and, st and things yes. like that? Okay. Yes. So what we would do is use outdoor paint, but not only that, we would seal it with several layers. So yes, it would hold up. Um, and of course, we would keep an eye on it as well. And if anything happened to it, we would step back in. Thank you. Um, I have a question about the planners. So um, yes. that red, is that like an edging? It's a stain. Oh, so is that a stain? a red wood stain, yes. Okay. They have something that- uh, Like a border type thing that you- Well, no, we'd actually, um, so rather than painting it, um, we would actually stain it. So it's a, it's a stain that would be able to sink into the wood, and then we would seal that as well. Okay, that's what I was saying. So it's some wood. Oh, I see. It's okay, I got wood. you. It is wood. It's okay. wood that's currently there, um, and we would seal that, stain it with the red, and then seal it, and then we would build six additional ones to be on the north side so that the two sides the of the alike. street would match. Exactly. So that's the you got it. <clears throat> yes. That is our proposal. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Marie. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Walking, it's a lot of help. <coughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mosaic, uh, Borough Hall parking lot. What are we doing? Yeah, so we are paving the uh, Borough Hall parking lot. Hopefully, if we if we get a good number, um, that bid is anticipated to open on the on the tenth. Um, obviously, the the Borough Hall has been here for twenty three years. It's never been repaved, so it would be a mill an overlay and striping. And then we're also gonna be laying conduit um, underneath part of the parking lot for uh, future electric uh, charging stations. Okay. And uh, do we need action on that? We, we will on Monday, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll have a recommendation for you on Monday. Okay. Yep, based on the bids. Very good, then uh, we'll add that, Jimmy. And Justin, I did see those charging stations used at Wawa. Yeah. We said I hadn't seen any. I saw one. Yep. Yeah, they're building them. They're building them. Okay, police vehicle bid awards. Yes, we they're have listed. those listed, and we, we will have a recommendation for Monday on these as well. Okay, we'll do that Monday. Uh, 14 is Sasha Diaz. Mr. Garner. Yeah, so as council knows, um, we have a procedure in place where a uh, property owner wants to uh, put a fence or a wall or anything within our, <clears throat> our right-of-way. Uh, we permit them to do that with the execution of a release and hold harmless. So they acknowledge that they're placing something within the right of way, and if the borough ever needs to use the right of way, that they understand that the fence or whatever the improvement is has to come down. So in this case, the property owner at 279 Hanover Street, uh, that's Hanover and 4th Street, I believe, intersection, it wants to install a fence. The fence would encroach in the right of way. They've executed the document that we've asked. 
So again, the right of way is under the control of borough council. So uh, if you're inclined to allow this, we would approve this agreement and allow the fence project to move forward. So that would be listed for Monday with your permission, Mr. President. Yes. Put that on the agenda. Uh, uh, Sunstrom Field, we have a new lease agreement or an addition. Yeah, actually an addendum. We have an existing lease from 2017 with Sports Enterprises. Uh, with Mr. Lenart's hard work, uh, we've tended to fine-tune that lease agreement through an addendum. Primarily, the changes are simply to confirm what's already been going on with respect to the use of the field, uh, but uh, we wanted to put it in writing. Um, Sports Enterprises serves American Legion baseball. We wanted to make it clear that American Legion teams that would use the field would be basically benefiting the residents of Pottstown and not all over the area. Um, we've put in provisions to allow the borough to use the field for the volleyball rumble, uh, expanded the times. The rumble's been expanding every year as far as number of days, so the lease now um, is revised to reflect that. Um, and the uh, sports enterprise would get a fee from the borough for the use of the field during that week, which uh, Mr. Lenhart believes is fair. Okay. Um, essentially, those are the changes to the document, uh, more fine-tuning than anything substantive. But again, as this moves forward, we kind of can better interpret what needs to be in the document. I don't think there's been issues with the lease since its inception. Is that a fair statement? So uh, Sports Enterprises has signed the addendum. It's in your packet, so it's ready for your consideration on Monday. Okay. We'll list that for Monday. Mr. Coverdale Rail Preservation, we have a maintenance agreement? We are working on one, but it needs to be reviewed by DCNR, so mm -hmm. I don't think it will be ready for Monday night. Okay. Very good. Uh, take it outdoors. What have you got? Yeah, so if you recall, this is the um, uh, the storage facility for the bikes and the kayaks that's run by a independent operator right. um, down in the uh, Riverfront Park. And uh, we would like to re renew this for another year. Um, I talked to our parks director, and then we have no uh, issues um, with this establishment, and um, we think it provides a great benefit to the community. If you recall, part of our agreement um, – provides for days, free days, for borough residents where they can rent a bike or, or a kayak. And I think those dates are still being determined for this year. Okay. So, so uh, you're ready for Monday or no? Yep, that's ready for Monday. There's really no changes to it, just changing the, the, the term. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll list that. Memorial Day Parade on May 29. Anything? Uh, I don't have anything um, specific <clears throat> on this other than to say I think it starts at 10 a.m. Um, oh, it's in our package. Yeah, it's in your packet. Yeah. I don't have it up right now. Okay, so we'll approve that Monday night. Go Forth Festival Street Fest on July 4th. So this one is a uh, closure from York to Charlotte. Uh, the event will be 11 to 4. Mm -hmm. Next item on the agenda, they're also requesting a beer garden in Smith Family Plaza and Memorial yeah. Park. So they're going to shut down at one move to the other. Okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. And we'll list those for Monday night. Uh, the Orca Euro Car Show. Yes. Yes. Uh, well he's he's back. You want to add? If, you, if you want to add anything, Jamie, feel free. Nothing to add. I'm happy to uh, take any questions, but mainly I just want to very quickly say thank you. It was, we say it takes a village, but the town really came together, business owners, property owners, Joe, the police, um, paid. Everyone was just unbelievably wonderful. And the feedback we got from across the world was just phenomenal. So many people, Post Town is beautiful. I can't wait to come back. Local people from across Pennsylvania saying, oh, the restaurants here are great. So thank you to everyone for last year. Um, I couldn't be more grateful. And uh, we're very happy to be back this year. Thank you. And Thank the, you. The feedback we got locally was good also. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate very well run. with the road closures. But, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully oh. it was worth it for the economic and everything else that we got. We're glad you're back. Yes. Thanks. And I thank, thank you. you for saying we're a village. 
because that's mm -hmm. I preach that every time. Everyone came together. It was unbelievable. That's how we do here in Pottstown. You know, that's how we do. Why Pottstown? Why? Why Pottstown? Because we the village. I live here. This is because we we the village. Yeah, that's we, what we, we do here. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Thanks, Jamie. So just uh, some details on that. So they are asking for a closure from. Um, Manitoni to Evans from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. and that would be on a on a Sunday, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. September 3rd. Well, that's gonna I'd be able to come. Okay. Well, that'll be with uh, approval from our police and fire. So list that for Monday. Yep. <clears throat> 22 is the fade on Blanc. Fade on I mean, back Blanc. September 8th. Yep, September 8th, and they're also asking for a street closure <clears throat> York to Hanover from 4 to 10. Um, and really, you know, the only thing we want to see with that closure is that they make provisions for customers of Truist Bank that are, that are trying to get in there and out of there mm -hmm. on a Friday, which we were able to accommodate easily last year, so that okay. shouldn't be an issue. And uh, they're increasing attendance from 500 to 750? I don't have a number for that yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, I talked with Peggy about that. Okay. If, yeah. If that's yeah, that's How many was last year? I think it was 500 last year. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That was more. Uh, and I, I know I had a host of people that wanted to come, but tickets went fast. Yep, you got to get the tickets early, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. They're also um, requesting alcohol in um, Smith Family Plaza. This would uh, be serviced by uh, ramp certified servers and um, <coughs> the uh, people in place to monitor to make sure the alcohol isn't leaving the tables. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, I, I know some of our counselors and some other people out there are asking if food could be delivered. Yes, so we, I know that is something they're, the they're trying to work on. To see yeah. if they'll come back to do that. Yes. OK, put that on for Monday. We don't like carrying our food in white dresses. <laughs> We'll make sure it's white, so if it spills, it'll blend right in. There you go. Yeah. Uh, upcoming board vacancies. We have a one five-year term uh, for April and two three-year terms coming up in April for the land back. Yes, and those two terms are Jamie Sanchez and Deb Penrod, and unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to speak with them to see if they'd like to run again. Okay. So we'll okay. reach out to them. We have a little time. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it's time for comments from any citizens present. Okay. I got it, yeah. All right. Um, so first, uh, um, there's a couple that it sent in um, via email that asked me to uh, read. Okay. So, and also, there... If, if you still want to sign in here, you're physically present at the meeting, we, you, can, you can sign in. We just need your name and address. Um, all right, so the first one is, and hopefully I can keep these to three minutes, but if I don't, it's not my fault. Uh, <laughs> uh, gentlemen and ladies, I'm addressing the matter of the code changing for warming centers. I'm sorry. Let me start first. This is from David Mest, 461 North Franklin Street. Gentlemen and ladies, I'm addressing the matter of code change for warming centers. The word of God says that we are to help the poor, but it also says that the poor should not be taken advantage of either. Does Pottstown not have enough programs going on to aid these people? We have Section 8 food shelters, places that serve hot food to the poor and homeless. My church participates in some of these programs. The warming shelters in North Coventry, which are a short walk away, I feel we need to keep our law intact. Pottstown has more than done its share and will continue to do so. This town has been dumping grounds for the area for long enough. As I understand it, this person has been operating knowing it's illegal and has acknowledged that he knows it. Why should we accommodate this agenda? Okay. I have another one from Philip Tease. Uh, 63 South Evans Street. Uh, to all members of Pottstown Borough Council to be read publicly, dear council members, this homeless shelter warming center being run by Beacon of Hope illegally at St. Paul's UCC Church on North Franklin Street is the subject at hand. They came in there without permit and they lied to the church's governing board that they had permission. 
how much more lying is this board, the borough council, going to tolerate? There has to come the light at some point of these people brought by the Beacon of Hope were flying high. It seems to me someone is making lots of money working for Beacon of Hope at my and my neighbors and fellow Pottstonians' expense. There are many reports of attempted break-ins of people's homes, and there are so many of the vagrants walking around. I now must lock my door to work out back in my garden and shed. I should not have to live in constant fear. The sad fact is most of these people are the product of drug and alcohol abuse. They try to blackball their community for wanting to improve itself. What about the safety of our children at Franklin Elementary School? Council members are not just to carefully care how the tax dollars are spent. They're also to protect the community from all dangers from within or from without. Please vote no on any extension and send the so-called Beacon of Hope to where it belongs in North Coventry. And um, next is a online commenter, um, Deb Spence. And just remind everyone, we'll have three minutes for public comment. And uh, we typically do not respond to the comments. Go ahead, Ms. Spence. Yes. Um, question is, on the website, it shows nine pages, maybe 500, 600 homeowners that didn't pay taxes since 2019. I want to know when are you all going to enforce that, enforce payment, collection of taxes? And um, second thing is, <clears throat> are committee leadership trained on fair housing and what is legal and illegal to say? And if so, if there's a violation, who handles those matters? Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, next is uh, Carl Kleinhen. Good evening. Um, I'd like to quickly express concern about the uh, the Pottstown Beacon of Hope homeless shelter at St. Paul's UCC. Uh, my wife and I moved there nearly four years ago uh, on Franklin Street. It's less than a block away from our house. Uh, we strongly believe in providing help to the needy, but I must be absolutely clear the safety of, of our family comes first. Uh, since moving here, we've already had two separate instances of strangers clearly under the influence of drugs coming onto our property. And the second time was at night, he tried to enter our kitchen door and I had to drive him off of our property while my wife called the police. I'm not suggesting that all of the people hosted by Beacon pose this threat in the future. I just wanna be confident that housing for adult homeless individuals in a residential neighborhood is managed properly for everyone in this community. Uh, Beacon is, as mentioned earlier, has knowingly uh, continued operations for some time when they're not allowed to do so due to zoning ordinance violations on a residential street across from an elementary school. So if they're not following local ordinances, why should we trust that they're operating a shelter that reliably keeps tabs on the whereabouts and mental state of the individuals that stay there? I don't think that Beacon has shown that they belong on Franklin Street. And frankly, I don't believe that Franklin Street is the place for a homeless shelter at all. And I would certainly also oppose any other type of organization that doesn't adhere to our established ordinances, zoning or otherwise. So if a, if a homeless shelter is allowed to continue operating in my neighborhood, uh, I look forward to learning when and how Pottstown plans to increase police presence on my street and how much our property taxes are gonna be lowered after the next reassessment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so at this time, um, let me call up uh, some of the members physically in attendance. So first up is Tom Nyros. And um, we are asking tonight that uh, you include your street and number. So if you could just let us know your address. I just moved. Um, Tom Nyhaus, 12 East Ray Street. Borough Council and staff, I am here today as a resident of Pottstown and as the executive director of Pottstown Beacon of Hope. I'm here to speak publicly about our relationship. Time and time again, we have met in private to discuss how we work together to address the unhoused in our community. Our purpose for resolution is not necessarily aligned, but we all want the same result, a healthy, revitalized, thriving Pottstown that we can be proud of 
and out-of-towners will want to be a part of. At the end of such meetings, Pottstown Beacon of Hope leaves hopeful. <clears throat> and though we don't agree 100%, all parties seem to go away with more understanding and alignment on the topic. We met in early November, and then we were blindsided with a cease and desist that we, told would not, where we were told would not happen. We had conversations and met the following week and were told not to come to the public meeting that we would not be discussed, only to find out that a three-page letter was read aloud on this topic and our organization. We had a meeting just last week on how to best move forward until the permanent shelter is built. Then over the weekend, President Wean's wife was out distributing a letter containing many inaccuracies and falsehoods about our organization, our guests, our program, and me. I'm not sure if you saw the video on Facebook or YouTube that shows these falsehoods being cited multiple times as facts. For example, in that letter that was distributed, it talks about the two reported uh, attempts, uh, break-ins on the 900 block of North Franklin. If this statement had been fact-checked, as I was able to do very quickly, it would have been clear that that's inaccurate and not true. Um, Distributing lies and inaccuracies such as this has no benefit to a needed solution for our community to prosper and undermines the work of Pottstown Beacon of Hope, the churches, and the community as a whole. Time after time, I am out speaking publicly of my gratitude for collaboration with the borough on these community issues. We at Pottstown Beacon of Hope have not only come up with viable solutions but have also had to continue to face the burdens of leadership, adversity, legal fees, planning, in hope, and all that in hopes and prayers for coordination, all while doing the heavy, heavy lifting. I have not once heard in public that Borough Council has a unified stance on addressing homelessness, let alone that they support or stand behind a solution or resolution that is here doing the work day in and day out. I am here today as a resident of Pottstown and executive director of Pottstown Beacon of Hope asking you to lead by putting out a statement to this community and issue your determination towards a resolution to solve this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bruce Lawler, please. Hi, good evening. I'm Bruce Lawler, 1002 North Evans Street. Uh, forgive me, I'm not a public speaker like Tom. Um, I've never, I'm a lifelong resident of Pottstown other than college and a couple years after that. Uh, I live out in 1002, like North Evans, a nice quiet neighborhood until recent. And I'm here because a nonprofit decided knowingly to start using St. Paul's Church as a homeless shelter, illegally. And I'm here looking for you folks to give me and my neighborhood the protection we deserve by the ordinance and our zoning against this illegal usage. Whether you feel it might be just or not, that's irrelevant at this point. If you feel that, then change the law. The law is that it's illegal. It needs to be stopped. It needs to desist immediately, in my opinion. Uh, furthermore, I'm really worried that this is being turned over to a zoning hearing board. Uh, they've already granted this organization one variance, which is questionable in my opinion. Um, not a lawyer, know a little about real estate, and I really don't see a hardship there. And I definitely don't see a hardship at St. Paul's. Um, so here I'm asking for you to help my neighborhood because it will negatively impart our market values. Um, I have a lot of questions about the guy that just spoke. Apparently, our one Zoom caller is the homeowner that reported the two break-ins that he claims didn't happen. So, that, you know, there's, a, there's, I think, a lot of credibility issues from this nonprofit. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, um, Dave, oh, I'm sorry, I can't read that. Kurtz, I'm sorry, and you are um, 333 yes. Gray Street. Yes. Go ahead, uh, Dave. Was, I've been living out there for approximately 23 years. Uh, just found out about this situation the last, you know, couple months. 
And uh, it's unnerving that there's 25, 30, 35. I guess they can, I don't know what the maximum capacity is, 40? Um, regardless, that's a lot of homeless people. Uh, nothing against the homeless. Uh, every, you know, the recovering alcoholics, drug addicts, homeless, they all need help. I'm all about that. We have halfway houses that are scattered throughout the borough. Homeless shelters, this is one of them um, that directly impacts me. Uh, and I'm paying $7,400, which it, it's a big hush-hush about property taxes and pot sale. Oh, he said $7,400. I should be two blocks from the beach. I'm two blocks from Redner's, people. These taxes are skyrocketing. I'm, I'm working two jobs to pay the taxes. This is on another night we can talk about taxes. But there's older people losing their homes in Pottstown for these taxes. But um, I'm a half a block from a homeless shelter at $7,400 a year. And I just got my tax bill in the mail the other day. Thank you. But, um, you know, that's a lot of money. And I find myself, I, I, there's one house separating me from the shelter. Again, I'm all for help. People need help. Uh, the homeless. That's not my job, though, to find where they need to be. And, and I know the gentleman uh, stated it's temporary. Te what, what, what are we talking here? They're going to build. This could be years. It takes one night for something to happen. We have 30, 40 homeless people that are gathering here nightly, tonight, tomorrow, whenever it is. And they're dispersing in the morning, okay? I have two grandchildren that stay over at my house. They're there in the morning, evening, and I have these people that are coming from all angles, gathering to this shelter. Above my own concerns, of course, my grandchildren, you know, that's the love of my life. That's what I'm concerned about. Even beyond me. We have Franklin Elementary School across the street. 15 seconds. Sorry, I can't grab, I can't wrap my head around that for the life of me, how they could illegally be across the street from a school. Whatever it is, I plead with you guys to stick to your guns, put the homeless where they need to be. I don't know where that is, but I don't believe it's across the street from a school. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, Robert Haynes, 1101 North Franklin Street, Pottstown. Thank you, council members. Um, I live approximately a block from St. Paul's, uh, my wife and I. And I, I have to say, we have not directly seen anything major on our property. We've noticed a bit of an increase in litter in the neighborhood. I'm not sure if that's related or not. However, I do have great concerns with an organization that knowingly would open a homeless shelter in violation of the ordinance, and after they're aware that it's in violation of the ordinance, that they would continue to run it. And I know there is some discussion about changing the ordinance to permit the shelters to operate in Pottstown, but I have concerns even if the ordinance is changed and that becomes legal, what's the other things that they're going to do that are not going to be legal? So I would vote, my opinion, have them cease and desist, discuss the ordinance separately once they cease and desist. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Catherine Haynes, 1101 North Franklin Street, Pottstown. Thank you. Um, next is Michael Albright, 961 North Franklin Street, Pottstown. <clears throat> My name's Michael Albright. Uh, I ditto 
most of what I've heard from the people who just came up here about this warming center. Um, the warming center is a great thing. Where it's located, different story. From what I gathered, um, and I don't know if I'm correct or not, the, the borough has an ordinance that says um, that there's not supposed to be anything like a warming center in the borough unless you get it approved. Now, two years, the last two years, it was at St. Aloysius uh, School, and I understand that that was approved. At that point, it was run by the same gentleman. This, this year, they've moved it from St. Aloysius, and I don't know why, because that's better set up to handle these people than uh, St. Paul's Church. Uh, that's um, proven because when they moved in there, they didn't have any porta potties there, and the number of toilet facilities inside the church probably couldn't handle uh, the number of people they had there. So they brought in two porta potties, which are now outside in the alley. Now, that's something that was supposed to be approved, and it hasn't been approved, but they're already there. Then there was some privacy fencing that's supposed to be approved, but it's not approved, and that's already been put up. Now, this whole thing's been pushed off so long that there's only one month left on their commitment to be there until the end of uh, April. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a, I'm a 76 year old man. I live two houses away from the church. My entire family on my father's side were members of that church. I don't know what's going on in that, with that church right now, the, whether or not they're accepting money to keep themselves afloat or not. I can't talk to that, uh, talk about that, but the uh, the fact that um, this has been going on four months, unapproved, as far as I can tell, and will probably be pushed to go on again next year, uh, depending on what kind of uh, approvals they can get from the zoning board. Um, I, I just seconds. don't understand it. I mean, I've lived in this in this town for uh, let's say I'm 76, less two years, for uh, 74 years. I've lived on that in that house there on North Franklin Street for 43 years. I served in the United States Army at the request of my neighbors to serve during the Vietnam War, and I was over there and fortunately came back. And all I'm asking for you for you to do is think about me when you decide which way you're going to vote to uh, uh, continue to take care of these people, which I understand they need to be taken care of, but they don't need to be taken care of in that church. It's not set up for that. Thank you, sir. That's it. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right. Um, <clears throat> last is Carolyn... Muck, 916 North Franklin Street. Good evening. How are you all this evening? Good. How are you all this evening? Good. Everybody? Good. Okay. Let me go back. I didn't have a pen. <laughs> um, so, I am a borough resident lifelong. I know some of the members of the councils personally. I have made the acquaintance of Mr. Tom Lyros personally, and now I am personally involved in the homeless situation. At 2 a.m. I came across a father and daughter homeless couple, and I have put them up in my home, traveled them to the shelter, set up the father's social security, took the father to the DMV twice on a Saturday for ID because that was their biggest obstacle, and I am now in possession of their puppies because my mother and I live right across the street from the church. Most of the people that come to these council meetings will all tell you they're born and bred or they have resided here forever. We have never turned away our fellow man, female, child, whatever. However, I came across Tom after he stood up after me the last council meeting and he admitted 
and fessed up to doing this improperly. Mm -hmm. So Tom and I have had personal discussions about the, the couple that I have there and business things to the point I want everybody to stop playing the game here, whether it's council, members of the council, and his organization. First off, who is the money behind Beacon of Hope? Is the staff of Beacon of Hope paid or are they volunteer and who's putting out the paychecks? Also, the property that they so wish to purchase, what is the address of this property? Who currently owns it? Who is it deeded to? How is it deeded? Do they have the money or the gentleman or organization behind this organization have the money? What's the deal? Why is everybody playing a game? He said, she said, people are sticking things in people's mailboxes. You got religious leaders coming out. You have residents coming out, whether we live in North End or not. You have children in play. Where the hell is the superintendent of schools in this? My problem is we are trying to help his organization help people. However, my problem also with Tom is because I had to go to the Social Security office, because I took them to Cluster to get them food, because I went to the DMV and three notaries on Saturday to assist them in their biggest problem. Why don't you people get it together, put it all under one roof? He still has one season to go, and he is helping 30 to 33 people. Supposedly, there's 90 homeless in Pottstown. Where the hell are the other 60, and does anybody give a crap about them, or do they even want our help? Everybody needs to stop playing this game, put out the correct, correct information, whether you do it online via the Pottstown Mercury, whatever. Everybody's life here is at risk. Property owners and what they're paying, whether they have the money to pay it. People who are in need of services, and if you're going to offer services, you don't put them overnight for 12 hours in a place and give them food. They need social services. They need DMVs. 15 they need, seconds. They need to be guided to what needs to be done for them. I am a single person in Pottstown. I am a 55-year-old woman who got put out of job by a creep husband, and I got stuck living with my mom. I had to sell my property because it got foreclosed. I owe this, owe that, liens, everything. I am done. I'm 55 and starting over again living with my mother and my two puppies and two people who are in need of Mr. Nairos's help, and I'm helping them solely myself. Why don't you all just stop lying, playing the game, and just do it and do it right and put out the facts instead of making us all do our own homework. You are in command of this borough. Take command of this borough and do right by all of us involved. Thank you. Thank you. And that appears to conclude public comment. <clears throat> all right. Uh, under counselor. Oh, can I just add one thing before what? Joe Cerisi leaves? So I, I mentioned that we are working on the lighting uh, upgrade project, uh, that the $250,000 that you got. And uh, right now we are making uh, great progress. Um, we have 190 lights installed so far, uh, mostly in the, in the numbered streets. Um, so it'll be wards uh, three and four, and then um, I think uh, seven, where, where we're doing this project with the 250,000. So we won't quite get um, all, of the, all of the 820 lights that we need, but that'll certainly maybe be on our uh, request for additional funding, as you had mentioned. So again, thank you, and I just wanted to update you on the progress. Okay, thank you. And from the counselors. Can't now. Um, Councilor's general discussion. Uh, Councilor Prosco. Oh, okay. Councilor Bailey. Yes. And I'm going to take my time here. Okay. okay. And I'm going to address the situation. And normally we don't. And like I said, I'm going to I'm going to go slowly because I am I am angry. I am angry that I'm here again. I don't know how this letter got circulated, but I had conversations today and I had not seen the letter. I had the public show me the letter. The letter is atrocious. I do not support not one thing that was said in this letter. Um, it has been three years we've gone back and forth. And you know what? I've been affected by the homeless for the last three years. You wanna know where they go when they leave? They come to my development and the parks across the street from my house. So, for the last three years, I've heard it's not our problem. Nobody helps us. So, I didn't want a permanent shelter here, but there was no other choice. And this warming center 
has been here for three years, so I don't know where the outrage all of a sudden is coming from. The letter, the, the notice, whatever we want to call it, was not factual. There is no ordinance change. It's a variance. I am tired of the arguing, the contrived phone calls, the contrived letters. Um, like I said, a different notice was dropped off to my door today. And I can't speak for everything Tom has done. And I don't generally come out and flat out support things. There's two sides to every story. However, I've had a personal experience with Tom. I had a gentleman sleeping in his car for I don't know how long in my development. I had a business owner and constituents reach out to me with concerns about this person because he would walk around all day and you wanna talk about children? We have children playing in our streets in, in our development. And not to mention, I'm a single person who lives by myself. Um, I reached out to Tom when my constituents were concerned. Tom answered his phone. Tom came out for several days, worked with me, worked with the man in his car, gained his trust, and then was able to help him. And I followed up with Tom. Do you know where that person is today? He's back home with his family. So what was said in this letter was an attack. And it's not all true. I'm not saying, sorry, Tom, that he's the best, right? He did break rules. We need to acknowledge that. However, what's been said is wrong. It's atrocious. And frankly, I am offended by it. And my name is not going to be attached to any of this. I'm done. Okay. Councilor Lindsay. Anything? Um, I had some happy stuff to say, but y'all just dampered my little parade with all this stuff going on. So I didn't even receive the letter. Lisa told me about the letter. See, that's how we don't talk. We They, they don't even talk to us, I guess, because I'm the black lady. They don't want me to cuss and act like a fool, but they don't want me to get my... So anyway, I didn't get the letter. So I on my out when I got off from work, Lisa and I had a conversation, and I just realized that there was a letter. I didn't even know. My pastor's telling me there's a letter, and I'm in the dark. Not color-wise, just dark. I'm in the dark. And I'm not happy about this whole thing either. I'm not happy about this. And I'm with Lisa. Don't put me with this mess because I'm going to act real ugly and start cussing. And I don't want to. And then my little southern accent started to kick in. So um, I'm really disappointed. And I understand the, uh, the constituents that live in the area. That's not the village. That's not how the village works. The village don't work like that. The village love and we support. Now that one lady, the last lady came there, I love her, I respect her because she did something. She took, she helped that. She didn't have to do that. She did not have to do that, but she did do that. That's the village. That's what the village does. Y'all, we, listen, we, we, we sit up here and we said we gonna serve and protect our borough. Protect the borough, the constituents. You know, it's, it, the constituents is not just taxpayers. There's people who need us. Parents, single parents, the, the kids, the people that can't speak for themselves. It's not just taxpayers. It's all of us. We are village. Some people don't have a job. They can't pay taxes. Some people rent. There's a lot of renters here, too. What are we going to do? We're not going to take care of them either? Come on, village, come on, come on. We got to do better. We focus on trash. We get out there and we take care of that trash. But what about the people here? Rehabilitate them. Work together. Come on, come on, village. Y'all know better. Come on. At least I've said, all what I could would have said. Come on. The other municipalities don't want it. They said, no, it ain't coming here. Y'all know that. Y'all know that. North Coventry, yeah, I'm talking about y'all. Y'all, it's they don't want it. 
So guess what? Guess who, guess who gonna put their big pants on and stick their chest out and get it in here? Pottstown. Because that's who we are. We the village. Just like that guy, just like what Jamie said. That village came out and showed out. Didn't he just say that? He just said, we come out, we show out. Come on. Off. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right, that's my soapbox. Okay. <clears throat> oh, good. Well, one of the things I want to say is that what I've noticed in my short time here on council is that there is a genuine, genuine desire for the people of this borough mm -hmm. to want to help. There are people who are sitting on the sidelines saying, put me in coach. Mm -hmm. We will help. We will help. And it's unbelievable. It's, it's amazing. Now, I love being in this town. I love everything about this town. I wish more people would live in this town. Yes. Okay? I wish people wouldn't leave here at 5 o'clock and go to their homes because we're not good enough for them. I wish. That's not what happens. So, to get to this issue, the big issue, okay, I agree with the, the, the last young lady who spoke. This is a game. This is a game, okay? And we're being brought into this. We have no subject matter jurisdiction on this matter, and we are being pulled in. This is a zoning issue. This is not a council issue. This is a zoning issue. Okay, council, there was a alleged violation of this particular zoning ordinance, and they were cited. The proper avenue is for them to seek a variance, okay? To ask borough council to support or reject or anything is akin to us sticking our noses into the neighbor's argument three doors down the street. Nothing good will happen. Now, I did a little research on the issue. And what I found is that, is that it's a myth, a myth that homeless people are either mentally ill or have a substance use disorder. It's a myth, it's an absolute myth, okay? The reality is, from the uh, Center for the United to End Homelessness.org, a homelessness advocate, is that the data we do have shows approximately one-third of homeless individuals have a mental health or substance abuse issue, issue. So these gentlemen and ladies who came up and discussed this, the issues that they are having, they're not making this up at all. They are going through their own experiences. So what that means, if there are 30 people that are being served in that center, approximately one-third of them have a high probability of being have a mental health or substance abuse issue. High probability. And another study that was done by the San Diego County District Attorney said for felony level offenses, the DA's office discovered that homeless individuals are up to 514 times more likely to commit crimes. That's not me making this up. I didn't make this up. I'm just reporting, I'm reporting the facts. That's it. So whether this homeless center is here or not, okay, if we decide that that's, if the zoning hearing board decides that that's what they would like and they're going to give a variance, then we should not be surprised if trash increases. We should not be surprised that the homeless uh, camp right next to the Norfolk Southern train tracks with, I don't know how many people are there, but there's a ton, okay, I would think that Norfolk Southern has an interest in securing their train tracks considering what just happened in East Palestine. It doesn't take much for a train to derail. So we shouldn't be surprised when the chief of police can't handle the, cr the additional crime or quality of life issues because they're busy taking on calls from a business 
that attracts 33% mentally ill or drug addicts. I don't, uh, taking away that it's good, taking away that we all want to be good about ourselves and feel that we've done good, okay, for, for those who are less fortunate, I view my responsibility is to the constituents of this town, the town, the people that live here, the people that go through this stuff every single day. They don't leave, they don't disappear, they stay. And it's a shame, okay? So we need to make sure that their quality of life is not impacted. It's a safety issue. If we were bringing in a business that brought in three to four, you know, 33% people who are highly likely to commit crimes, I think you would be very upset if we allowed that business. My opinion. This is not a discussion. I'm not having a conversation with you. I understand you don't agree with me because it's not what you want to hear. Okay. Okay. When you spoke, I didn't say anything. I know you don't agree with me, and that's fine. And that's fine. My job is to represent all the people, those that like me, those that dislike me, all of them, to do the best for all of them. That's right. And to make sure that the business owners who spend their capital trying to make this town a better place don't have to deal with defecation in their, in their places of business outside. They don't have to deal with a big pile of trash that I saw on High Street that Jamie Sanchez cleaned up. It was filled with food. Where'd that come from? Somebody didn't want it? I don't know. We should not be surprised if the problems occur. We should not be surprised. And I don't know why we're asked to do anything when this is a zoning issue. Because it's a game. Because we're playing politics. Exactly. I, that's all I have to say. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Kirkland. Um, I just feel that um, we have to be we have to be careful how we um, label homeless people because um, um, I'm a licensed financial advisor. I, I do a lot of things, but <laughs> but um, in my business, uh, you know, I hear the numbers all the time. You know, you know, yeah. You know, 70-something percent of families are, you know, two paychecks away from living on the street, stuff like that. You know, you, you have all the, all the statistics that's out there. Um, <clears throat> and those families, those families are regular families, like, 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 you know, you and me. I mean, that's literally two paychecks away from living on the street. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not always, you know, um, and I agree, you have to be careful. You, you know, you have to be careful who you bring in. You can't bring in, you know, some someone that you don't know. You know, maybe it should be background checks. I don't know the answer at this point in time. But um, now this is something that I committed to not saying publicly, but I'm going to. Um, my wife and I have, before the pandemic, we made the point every summer for the few summers before the pandemic, we, we've taken people into our homes, into our home. Um, <clears throat> one summer, she was driving down the street. She saw people in the corner, 10, ten people with, with, with suitcases. She came home, Joe, Joe, I just saw 10 people in the corner with suitcases. We jumped in the car, drove down to where they were, literally. 10 people in the corner, in pots down with suitcases. Nowhere to go, homeless. We took them home the whole summer. It tripled our bills, tripled our food bills, tripled, tri tripled everything. Okay. Um, that fam th those people all have jobs, all live in an apartment, self-sufficient. 
at this point. Okay. So, <clears throat> yes, I understand you got to be careful, but my whole point of what I'm saying tonight is just be careful how we label them. You know, because, you know, it's true. You know, every, you know, I'm not every family, but 70, 73, 74% of families are two paychecks away from being homeless. That's the statistic. So. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. No mayor. Uh, let me begin with, uh, you know, a few years ago, we had very few homeless issues before the pandemic. Uh, we, we had a number of churches here in town mm -hmm. uh, that provided shelter when needed. There were others that provided food as needed. Uh, but then in the past years, Norristown closed its shelter, whether it was a county shelter or a state shelter or whatever. And now we must take action in this crisis to help those in need. My wife Polly and I are deeply concerned about the homeless as well as the recent and growing challenges that this situation is causing for our residents, business owners, and those who visit Pottstown. No one wants to be homeless, and we do not want anyone to be homeless. Thoughtful actions must be addressed. Homeless shelters do not provide a path for those poor souls to find new meaningful lives. And nighttime shelters are not a quick fix. I've discussed a program that Polly and I have with Dr. Vernon Ross, and this morning with a Miss Washington at uh, Mission, uh, whatever, Mission First. And it has to be a program that provides incentives to get the homeless back to work. So they can make a new start, which will lead to providing for themselves and shelters of their own. We need to lead the rehabilitation of the homeless so they can transition into a good life here in our community. A warm bed at night isn't enough. It, it, it doesn't cause, it doesn't help the problem. It doesn't cause a fix. Uh, in fact, some people say it might be enabling. And what I want council to do is work with those organizations who can provide help, whether it be the, the, the VA. And I know, talking with our state senator, she's bringing the VA in to help those. I, I know talking with Ms. Washington, she has a program to help those that might have mental challenges. And there are others that we can draw in. The objective is not to give people a, a, a quick night place to sleep. You know, they won't have that in the summer. We know that. The objective has to be, what can we do collectively and together to provide training and opportunities? So I will continue my discussions with uh, Dr. Ross and Ms. Washington and any other agency out there that can help me put a coalition together to actually make progress, not just give someone a nice place to sleep one night. I thank you all this evening. Meeting adjourned. We, uh, yeah, we, uh, we will be going into executive session. No action will be taken, and this is on lit um, litigation. Yeah. Yeah, just so we comply with our own rules that we talked about earlier, the Beacon of Hope zoning appeal qualifies as litigation. It's appropriate to discuss this in executive session. As Councillor Manastra pointed out for the benefit of the audience, this matter is proceeding to the Zoning Hearing Board. Borough Council is an automatic party to any zoning proceeding, and therefore Borough Council has rights to participate or not participate, and potentially on Monday night there could be a vote on council's participation or lack of participation in that proceeding. So we will be going into executive session to discuss this. There will be no action taken tonight, and potentially Monday evening there could be a vote. Very good. Meeting adjourned.